Live from New York, it's terrible. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst SNL musical performances. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the worst musical performances to ever take place on Saturday Night Live. To be clear, we're not talking about controversial performances, hi Sinead, and we're not talking about dull performances or artists who, years on, are forgotten and obscure. What we're talking about are performances that were monumentally disastrous, even in the moment, and that generated a lot of negative chatter afterwards. Number 10. Meatloaf 1978 was a big year for Meatloaf. The actor slash rock star was hitting dizzying heights thanks to the success of the Bat Out of Hell album. This was enough to land Meat an appearance on SNL, a platform that would catapult him to the masses and a new level of fame. Okay, oh wait, my hand's caught in my hair! <laughs> Introduced by veteran actor Christopher Lee, with a groan-worthy joke, Meatloaf and company were poised for a great performance. Until Mr. Loaf begins to sing, that is. That will never change the way Between rocky and shaky, his vocals never quite come together, notes both high and low go unhit, and even his team of backup singers seemed bored and frequently wander off-key. Number 9. Troy Sivan When Troy Sivan appeared on SNL in 2018, his performance of My 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 split the room, or at least the Twitterverse. Oh my, my, my. While Savan won some new fans, or at least reaffirmed some old ones, others were not so kind. Commentary ranged from viewers not knowing or wanting to know who he was, to questioning exactly why he was so damn wet. But these were the kinder comments. Others took his dancing to be a lame attempt at being sexy, others deemed him an Aaron Carter wannabe, and a dancing and singing lizard boy. Yikes. Number 8. Iggy Azalea featuring Mo. Iggy nailed it here. If you're a fan of her music and brand, you were sure thrilled with her performance. The trouble here is Mo, a Danish singer with a long list of collaborators. This was Mo's first appearance on American TV, and oh, how it shows. From the moment she wanders out, the segment comes off like a scrapped sketch from an unfeatured player working through their two weeks' notice. She would later cite microphone latency issues as the source of her troubles, but that hardly explains her off dancing and sixth grader in a school play stage presence. Number 7. Chris Gaines Who's Chris Gaines? He's the Australian-born, pre-emo, late-90s rock star, of course, or in reality, a soul patch wearing Garth Brooks in a Beatles wig. There's a lot to unravel here. As an artist, Gaines did have a Billboard Top 5 hit, making him a quasi-worthy guest. In the Gaines verse, however, he was huge. The trouble is while the character had a whole backstory and was ultimately intended to lead a feature film, that film was never made, the general public knew none of this and were instead baffled by a strange game of dress up from the decade's top country artist. Number 6. Fear Think all it takes to be punk is a couple of power chords and a Californianized British accent? Oh no friend, punk is a way of life. At least it was for fear. Formed by Lee Ving just a few years prior, the band caught the attention of John Belushi, who attempted to get them to soundtrack his film Neighbors, only to see the idea shot down by Studio Brass. To make it up to them, Belushi petitioned to get them on SNL, despite no longer being a cast member. The result? A studio full of slam dancers, pumpkin guts, and $20,000 worth of damages. 
Number 5. The Replacements Formerly the Impediments, until the band's drunken rep caught up with them, the Replacements were known to like a song now and again between drinks. What a mess. I'm your they once drunkenly played the worst set ever staged at CBGB to an audience of talent scouts, no less. But in 1986, fortune shone on the mats when the Pointer Sisters canceled and musical director G.E. Smith invited them to SNL. We are the sons of no one. Rehearsal went well, but the hours before the show were spent getting drunk with host Harry Dean Stanton, and their obvious state clothes swapping, and an uncleared F-bomb were enough for Lorne Michaels to ban them then and there. Number 4. Kesha She's reinvented herself since, but in 2010, Kesha arguably set the SNL benchmark for awful. I'm talking pages, I'm on toes, China, not on clothes. There are all kinds of bad floating around here, from her odd stage presence, which many speculated was due to drunkenness, and lame rapping. This was capped by Kesha asking, Did anyone ever stop to think, maybe we are the aliens? But for your love is my drug, she doubled down on the weird and came out in glow paint. This, aside from being strange to look at, was objectively offensive to indigenous peoples. The singing was arguably a little better, but still off pitch at times. Number 3. Kanye West Kanye is known to commit a social faux pas now and again, but they rarely directly involve his music. Had a run from you, I'm in love with you, but the vibe is wrong and I haunted me. On SNL, while promoting 808s and Heartbreak, the Louis Vuitton Don launched into Love Lockdown, a track thought by many critics to be the highlight of the album, and a departure for West given that it featured him singing. But did it? I'm not loving you. Way I wanted to see I wanna move but can't escape from you. For style rather than a lack of talent, West's singing voice for the song was processed via vocoder, a device that converts and musicalizes the human voice. So we're far from in the danger zone. How many times did I tell you for if I may got through you lose? Yeah, you lose. Live, however, this proved incredibly messy, with Kanye's voice cracking, the vocal effect coming through inconsistently, and the backups being cranked up sporadically to cover it. Wes grabbed people's attention with another SNL performance a decade later, when he began playing an extra song that had to be cut with a commercial break, all while wearing a MAGA hat. And he capped things off with an unplanned and unaired speech about President Donald Trump. How did you like Trump? He's racist. Well, uh... If I was concerned about racism, I would have moved out of America a long time ago. Number 2. Lana Del Rey We've all gotten used to Lana Del Rey, but 2012 was a different time. A few years prior, she was Lizzie Grant, a budding songwriter and up-and-comer. I was like, no, please, stay here. We don't need no money, we can make it all work. Taking on the name Lana Del Rey, she found her first round of fame in 2011 via YouTube, and her star only climbed higher with her second album, Born to Die. However, that album was still weeks away when she appeared on SNL in January of 2012, an appearance that was instantly hated. Perhaps due to a case of too much hype with too little proof and substance, or maybe because it was simply underwhelming. Heaven is the place on earth with you. Tell me all the things you want to do. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. Number 1. Ashley Simpson While it doesn't require as much talent as singing, lip syncing is also an art. You have to, well, you have to synchronize your lips to the words mostly, but you also have to really sell it, you know? On a Monday, I'm waiting. Tuesday, I'm These friends are the basics of lip syncing, but it also helps if you're mouthing the right song. 
On stage for her second song, Autobiography, Simpson's disembodied voice began to sing first song, Pieces of Me, which prompted her band to switch tracks, and her to do a merry jig and bolt. I feel so bad my band started playing the wrong song, and I didn't know what to do, so I thought I'd do a hoedown. <laughs> Initially blaming her band, Ashley later said she opted not to sing due to her acid reflux. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.